I remember like writing out like a cowboy, like, or this, like, you know, this is character that we're building, like, what are the characteristics, right? And so I remember like writing out all these different characteristics from what I would want this person or this character to like represent. And the one that stuck out was like this idea of like solitude and like loneliness. Um, and then we were like, is there something there? And then it was like, okay, well, you take a cowboy, it's only one person on a cowboy, a single rider, a lone rider. And so that's kind of like how we came up with that. Um, and so it, it definitely wasn't like an overnight, like it was, it was like a, we wanted to make it like a really like creative process. Cause we were like, if there's any longevity to this brand and like what we hope it would become, like we needed to kind of like take our time and like really like build out this brand story. When you got to this name, did it like click immediately? A hundred percent. We said it and we were like, that's it like that like it and it just kind of like flowed and it just like stuck and like you know then you have like lrr and like that sounds like really good as like you know a shortened version and everything so we were we were pretty gassed up once we uh you know finally landed on a name awesome connor um thank you for coming on um we just typically just try to get right into this try to um you know, not waste any time. So I'm not used to this seat, dude. I know I'm not we, used we to switch, this one we either. Switch, we switched. We're trying we a new. Everything like the past like 20 setup. episodes, probably like no 15 way. episodes, we've been like switched. Yeah. And yeah. today we got a different camera angles. We got a little over the shoulder action. That's awesome, I love it. And uh, this one's switched. inspired by the LeBron and uh, JJ Redick pod. Yeah. <laughs> Unreal. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe but, not quite on their level yet, but but getting there. Like, yeah. Slowly but surely. Exactly. Production quality's there though. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Connor, thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate um, you guys having me. Uh, just kind of get right into it. Just kind of tell us what you've been up to um, these last few years. Um, you know, what yeah. brought you to Boston? Kind of what have you been doing in your yeah. time here? So originally from St. Louis, born and raised there, moved out to Boston um, after I graduated in 2017. And I first got out here because I got an internship with Harvard Athletics. And so it was a post-grad like internship. And I was doing like a lot of creative media for them. So anything that was like, photography videography for like the sports teams what they were posting on like social like i was kind of like shooting all that i was editing it uh, a lot of graphic design too so i got right up to boston right after i graduated i think like i had a month at home before i came up here so that's almost what seven years now like going on seven years which is kind of crazy um went from harvard athletics was there for almost four years did about two at DraftKings, and now I'm like a year and four months into New Balance and been up here. Boston's all that I've known since I've graduated. So um, it's been it's been good to me. And, uh, you know, now it's just kind of like a whirlwind of working at New Balance and also kind of like just running Lone Rider as, as best as I can. So I'm definitely busy, um, which is a good thing. You know, I think uh, I think it's good to stay busy and stay active with all that stuff. But it's kind of been a whirlwind the past, like, you know, more so the past like two years um, with like social media kind of like picking up, obviously Lone Rider and then, you know, working full time at New Balance. It seems like your career and like everything's progressing like a very creative way. Yeah. Right. Like your position now at New Balance, mm -hmm. obviously with your brand starting with Harvard in like photo video, yeah. right? Growing up, was that always consistent? Were you always like figuring out ways to get creative or get artsy with things? It was kind of like, not really. I, and then short, like not really. Um, like I I got into it in like a funny way because like my parents in, in school, when I was in college, I must've been like a sophomore year of college or whatever, I got, my parents got me a GoPro for my birthday. And it all starts with a GoPro. It, it really does. Like <laughs> it really does. And so at the time I was like bringing my GoPro to, I played soccer for two years in college and I also played baseball for all four years. So, um, at the time I was bringing my GoPro to like soccer practices and just like, you know, just messing around, like nothing too serious, like filming stuff for me and my buddies. And then I would like cut it up and say like, Oh, here's like a little video, funny video of you. Here's like a cool team video, like whatever. And so that kind of like started the whole creative process for me where I was like, I love the idea of going to like shoot something and then like bringing it to life. Right. It was this whole idea of like, how can I take an idea or a vision and like bring it to life, whether that was through photography or videography. Um, and so that started my junior year kind of like spun into actually working with the athletic department on campus came out, had built a good relationship with our basketball coach at the time who was like 
we want all the content. Like, you know, at that time, like sports content, like wasn't really a thing. Like it was kind of like just starting where like social media was like really starting to pick up. Um, so this and, would have been like 2014, 2015. Yes. Yeah, so this was, math. this was 20, yeah, 2015 okay. around there, 2015, 2016. Um, and so, yeah, not a lot of like college sports teams were where like, where were you at school? I went to Principia. Okay. It's a small D3 school in Illinois. Um, obviously stayed close to home, like with St. Louis and everything, but like, it was like small where, I could like build those relationships with the coaches and the players. Like they were all like buddies of mine. So, you know, for me to go to a practice and film something, they were like, yeah, like come on by, like it's super easy, low key. Um, and so that just like trickled into working with the athletic department and then going into my senior year, this was like a month right before I graduated and my friends had jobs or internships lined up. And I was like, I've got no clue that I wanted to like what I was wanting to get into. Um, so I was a business major with an emphasis in like marketing and a minor in communications. And so, you know, I was like, I'm not a finance guy. Like I've never been good with numbers. Like my financial accounting classes were like just absolutely dog water. So I was like, this isn't fun. Like I don't want to get into this. And so I was like, how can I take this like new creative passion of mine and like combine it with sports? Right. And so, um, I was scrolling through like LinkedIn or indeed one day and I saw like an internship with Harvard athletics and I was like, Oh, it's Harvard. Like out of all places, like I'll just apply, like whatever. Didn't think much of it. And then about like two weeks later, I landed a job with them and they were like, come up after you graduate. And it was a 10 month long post grad internship. And that kind of just like kicked it off for me. So the whole like creative background and journey was like almost like speed ramped for the you know since my sophomore junior year of college like up until now and it's like something that i look back and i'm like i'm so glad that i have that like creative background where um you know whether that's like video production or photography uh it just kind of like now at new balance like almost is like an asset right it just makes me a little bit more valuable where if there's a need for a graphic right away or a social video that needs to be cut up, like instead of outsourcing that to an agency or someone else, they can just come to me and they're like, Hey, can you cut this up real quick? So it's awesome to like have that background, but it has been like just kind of, you know, crammed into like the past couple of years, which is pretty exciting. It seems like most of it was like self-taught too, right? Dude, all self-taught. Like I took, I took one graphic design class in college and I think I ended up getting like C plus B minus. Like it was not my thing. I was like, this is a different world for me at the time. And then everything else has all been like trial and error, YouTube, like the amount of times I would like go to YouTube and I'm like how to do X, Y, and Z in Photoshop or in Adobe Premiere and just like learn that way. Like that was what worked for me. And like, I was never paying for a video class, you know, and it was something I was like, oh, like, I'm hungry for it. Like, let me just teach myself. And that's the best way that I'm going to learn. Um, so it's kind of like, yeah, crazy that like, you know, some people will go to school for video production, but I'm just like, I'll just watch it on YouTube. What are some of like the lessons that you learned in the corporate world? Cause you know, you're just kind of very self-taught on the yeah. creative side, the video side. And like a lot of people want to jump right into entrepreneurship right away. Yeah. But they don't really have a foundation to do so. So like, how did you parlay your creative, you know, self-taughtness with the lessons you learned in the corporate world to kind of launch Lone Rider? Dude, it's, it's been, it's been a lot because like, especially at New Balance where, um, there's such like an emphasis on like this elevated brand, right? New Balance is really intentional about any type of like marketing that goes out there, which is awesome, which is really cool. And to be able to, I think what's what's been most helpful for me is like having the creative juices to be like, okay, like I feel like I know what works well from a creative standpoint and especially when it comes to like social media and then kind of like layering like how can I think bigger picture for like the corporate like for new balance as a whole right what makes sense as a brand as opposed to like what makes sense just for me and i think that's the biggest thing is like learning how to like take that step back and say okay like you know brand goals are x y and z the brand wants to accomplish this we want to get into like this sports category like what are things that i can do to help kind of like take those steps like obviously it's very small and like one person's not gonna <laughs> make that much of a splash in the bucket but um i think it's like really important to like take that step back and like look at like okay the the bigger picture here is you know new balance or draft kings or lone rider like i want to get into this space this is what i want to do and kind of like work backwards from there being like okay like creatively like this needs to happen or you know i need to do this or 
learn this skill in order to take like that next step and like help scale. So I think like that ability to like look at it from the bigger picture is like what's going to help get that like end goal. What was your first experience like creating for yourself? Because like you talk about, you know, working at these other companies, yeah. working for Harvard. Yeah. But building your personal brand is like part of the reason why we connected with you, yeah, met you in yeah. Boston, obviously. Yeah. Um, what was the first like video or project that you were like, I'm, I'm going to do this on my own? So like a lot of I did have like a lot of creative freedom at Harvard, which was awesome. And, and that was kind of like what fulfilled me there was making like edits or, you know, taking pictures and sending it to the guys on like the football team. Right. Because I was like, oh, they they'll eat this up like, you know, those, you know, guys, how athletes are like they just love that stuff. Um, so I think like there was a lot of like projects where I was just doing it for myself to like fulfill like the creative um, like I don't want to say threshold, but like to, to fill, fill, to fulfill that creativeness that I wasn't getting typically. Um, and then, you know, looking into like personal, like social and like how that's kind of like blown up. Like, I think the first video I ever made, like on TikTok was back in like 2020, like early on, like when, you know, Charlie D'Amelio was still like dancing. Like that was when like, it was kind of like early in there. Um, and I just like made a video about like Boston specifically. Like I, I saw that there wasn't like a lot of people talking about Boston or like making content about Boston. And I was like, yeah, I'll just make one video. And that kind of like got, you know, a little bit of attraction. And I was like, okay, something's here. And then it just trickled like from there. But, um, you know, I think like looking at the early stages of like TikTok and like this more like creating content for myself, it was very much like trial and error and being like, well, let's see what sticks and what doesn't stick. And if it doesn't stick, then like move on and try to find something else. So it wasn't like, there wasn't any like real goals to it or anything. I was just like, oh, I think this is funny or like this isn't as serious as I like ever want it to be. So like there's no harm in it. But then it started to stick. Then it started so, to stick, right. yeah. which was wild. And like that was something where like over time, it became like this like very like niche kind of like Boston like following, which was like weird. And like, like I said, like I wasn't ever like expecting it to blow up like the way relatively like the way that it did. Um, and so, you know, once you start seeing like what works, you're like, okay, like let's double down on it and like really try to grow um, either like a community or a presence and a platform and, and, and take it from there. So definitely like a whirlwind and like, you know, looking back at it, like now, if I was telling my 2020 self, like when I started it, like, oh, you're going to have over 100K like followers and, you know, this is going to open the doors for that. Like, I'd be like, no way. Like, you know, just because at the time I was like, this isn't that serious. So it's for people that haven't seen your content, like how would you describe it to, to them? Yeah, it's um, I think it's a little bit different now because I'm not like actively making as much yeah. content right now. Um, but in the past, like I would say it was very um it started off like very like Boston specific. So, you know, I, I made like the joke videos about like, oh, if girls go to this bar, this is what it says about her. Or if a guy takes you on this date, you know, content that's like relatable, especially like for people our age, like who are just, you know, post-grad exploring a new city, like trying to like learn the ins and outs of the city and everything. And so it was really like Boston focus. And then I think it like started transition just more towards like lifestyle, like comedy, like there, I, I don't think I had like a real like niche per se. Like, you know, I, I made like frat videos and like, you know, t playing into the whole like stereotypical like frat guy. And um, like, obviously like that was, that was a funny and just like a whirlwind of a time period. Um, and then like the hockey content too, like is also entertaining. Um, so it was kind of just like a whirlwind of all different like entertaining funny videos and then you know you layer that with like kind of like that boston like niche following that i had i feel like that's so underrated too because like a lot of people like people we've had on here yeah and like we have a ton of everybody that comes on here we have a lot of respect for like totally across the board creator wise but it's cool to get a variety of like there's a lot of full-time creators right that have to make a certain style of video yeah. Yeah. because if they try to make something else it just won't do well at yeah. all yeah. Um, and it's very hard to pivot out of that. But if you kind of don't take it as seriously, like yeah. what you, how your approach yeah. was, you can just do whatever you want and you don't burn yeah. out as quick. I mean, maybe you probably do have some burnouts, yeah, stories completely. of burnout, but yeah, like yeah, it's, it's more, it's just like unserious and like easy and it's fun and you, you, you keep the creativity there. Yeah. I think like that's something for me, like, you know, I, 
I think some people probably like experience that because they're like, oh, I want to become like a full time like influencer. And they put a lot of, like a lot of this like pressure on themselves to like the, the videos have to do numbers and the engagement has to be this, this and this. And like for me, like I was never wanting to become like a full time like influencer. I was like, I've got my nine to five. There's other things in life that I'm like really interested and passionate about. Like so for me, the goal was not to like ever be like, oh, I'm going to quit my corporate job and, you know, full time into social media. I think if it got to that place, like I'd explore it, but like that was never a goal for me. So I think because of that, I was very much like, all right, like I'm doing this for fun. Like, let's just see what happens and just kind of like take as many swings as possible and see like what kind of like resonates and how I can like build and grow like a following and a community from it. So yeah, there was definitely like, I'd say in general, probably like I didn't really put a lot of pressure on myself and I was just more or less doing it just to have fun and kind of like, you know, see what's out there in social. Um, when we like last saw each other at Moxie's, yeah. you kind of, I don't know if you jokingly said it or you were serious about it, but you said you were retired from social yeah. media. Yeah. Like, what do you mean by that? And like, kind of what made you like, you know, say that led to that decision? Yeah. It's funny because like, I joke, I, I jokingly say that, but like, I think at the same time, I'm like serious about it. Um, so obviously like I work nine to five in like social and what I do at New Balance is like all in social. And so I think like for the better half of, you know, four four years or so, like my corporate job has been like social media. And so I think that in addition to, you know, coming home and then thinking like, okay, what content am I going to make? Like I have to make a video about this or, you know, um, just constantly like thinking of ideas. Like there was some burnout, like a hundred percent. And, you know, towards the end, like I, <laughs> it's towards the end, but like towards the end of when I was like really posting a lot, like I was, I was making videos just to check a box, like for contracts and brand deals and everything. So a lot of, a lot of it was content that I wasn't necessarily like motivated by, or like really wanted to make, or like that didn't like intrinsically like fulfill me. That you know what I'm saying? back to the Harvard point too. Cause you said you enjoyed that role so much yeah. just because you know, like you got to do what you wanted. Right, right, yeah. exactly. And so, you know, like I think because of all of that, I was just like, I need a little bit of a break, you know? And so it was, it was funny because like, I think I was experiencing like that personal, like burnout, like it wasn't like fulfilling me the way that it once had. And then like, I, I would, would scroll TikTok and I'd be like cynical. I'd be like, I don't want to see your day in the life. I don't care about your haul, like all this stuff. I was just like, this is so dumb. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I definitely like have taken like a step back um, from it and like not for necessarily like, any rhyme or reason but I think more or less just to like allow myself to be motivated to want to either like create or post the things that like truly like motivate me and fulfill me um, I think like that's the biggest thing and that's like definitely been like my approach to like social like s recently is just to be like I want to do the things that like make me happy and that like I actually like want to post about. So you're just posting like whatever you think is cool and you're not really like, yeah. actively exploring any brand deals because yeah. you kind of have your own thing going on. Yeah, yeah. So not, yeah, definitely not like really exploring. I think like the last video I posted on TikTok must have been like back in February. So, you know, I haven't posted like in a couple of months and in a weird way, it's like kind of freeing in a sense because I'm like, oh, I don't, you know, it's been four months since I posted a video like I don't feel a pressure to like post something. Right. And so now it's so much of a thing where if I'm going to post, like it's going to be like more intentional, you know what I mean? Like I'm going to have a reason to like post or like a reason to create content. Um, so it's, it's definitely, it's, it's, it's a mix of all of that. And then focusing like so much of my time and energy and effort into like other things. So, you know, my actual job, lone rider, um, and kind of like everything in between. I feel like a lot of, you just touched on something that like yeah. motivation, yeah. which is like such a big thing with like anyone creative that you realize like there's a big balance between finding, letting motivation come to you mm -hmm. and then going out and like kind of pushing through the like rough where like you really don't want to create, you really don't want to like, you're just, you're not in a creative space, yeah. but you need to find it. Yeah. Um, do you have any experiences where like you want to touch on that or just like a general like thought about finding motivation where, uh, versus like letting it come to you? Dude, it's like, that's such a good point because, and I think that's like a little bit of why, like I said, like at the end of like me being really active on social, like I was just checking a box for like contract and brand deals where I was like going out of my way just to make a video into like, you know, to find something to make a video about when I wasn't like really motivated by that. And I think like for me, you know, letting that motivation come in whatever, you know, 
shape form it looks like is like super important so you know and that's why i said like if i post something now like it's going to be intentional right because i look at where i am in my life even compared to like a year ago and you know two years ago when i was like super active like the growth and what i've just been like experiencing is is so like night and day right and you know i think when i was most active like i was really motivated by kind of like that external validation you know and like you see you see the interactions you see the likes and the comments and you're like oh like this feels good but on the flip side like there wasn't a lot of like self-confidence like truly like and so i think for me to take the step back and say okay like i am you know a complete whole person these are the things that like kind of like fulfill me and like fulfill my life and like what makes me happy like I need to focus on that before I even begin to like look for like any external validation. I think like that too, like I just like, I got to a place where I didn't need that and I was wanting to let those things that motivate me, whether it's Lone Rider, whether it's my job, whether it's, you know, different hobbies, photography, different things like that kind of like fuel my, my life and like what I'm posting about, what I'm talking about because like I think social is like, it's this place where, you know, if, if we don't know each other and you go to my page, you're going to see what I'm about because of what I post. Right. And so I want that to be like a reflection of like who I am. And so like allowing myself like that space and that distance to like truly like find that motivation has been huge. Talk about Lone Rider. When did that come into, yeah. the, into the equation? Yeah. How did that like the first idea? Obviously you talk about, OK, I don't know if I want to make social media full time, yep, yep. but it's really it's always kind of an avenue to start something totally. and start a brand with the community you built. Yeah. How'd that come about? Yeah. It, uh, I mean, social has like opened so many doors and obviously like Lone Rider is one of those doors. Um, so it came about back in, this must've been like February of 2022. Like, so, you know, a little over two years ago, um, I had a friend at the time who come to me and was like, Hey, when is like Connor coin merchandise coming out? And I was like, dude, I'm not going to make like merch. Like, I'm not going to take like a quote of mine and put it on a t-shirt and sell it. Like that's kind of cringe. Right. And I told him, I was like, I'm so interested in like wanting to like build something like build a brand, whether that's, um, you know, directly has my name associated to it. Or, you know, if it's, it kind of like runs in parallel to like what I'm doing, like I was just wanting to do something. Um, and so him and I kind of like explored that idea a little bit and he was like, okay, well, if, you want to like build a brand let's say clothing brand like what would you want the first product to be and i've always been like a big hat guy um i think like you know hat is like hats are just like such a cool accessory you know and they in now more than ever like it's so individual where kind of like shoes right it, it is like a re reflection of like who that person is and everything like that so i was like you know what let's do hats and so him and i spent the next couple of months like really exploring like okay like what is this brand what is it you know mean to me personally how can we grow it um what does that product actually look like and so it was a lot of back and forth and i kind of knew like i wanted to have like this like western like inspired like you know it was really inspired at the time by like Siegelman stables and like what Max Siegelman has built and truly like admired him and everything that he's been able to build. And like, I had a conversation with him um, a couple summers ago, you know, right when we were kind of like starting this and I was like, dude, just like, how have you been able to do it? And, you know, just really a candid conversation about like how he was able to grow what he did. And that like led down this journey of like, all right, if we're going to start a brand, like, and I'm going to be associated with it. Like I wanted to have some like personal connection to like me and to like my story. Um, so being from St. Louis, my mom's from Tennessee. And like, I kind of like always like grew up like country music, like cowboys, like Western. Like I thought it was so cool. Right. The whole like Marlboro man. Like I was like, this is sick. Like what, what that image looks like and how it's like rugged and tough was so cool to me. And then taking like that aspect of it and then taking like, my personal kind of like connection in um you know support of like men's mental health i was like how can we use like cowboys as like this cool like duality of both like rugged tough but also at the same time like there's there's like loneliness there's like a very nurturing kind of like compassionate side that i don't think like a lot of people associate with cowboys and so it was like a combination of all of that taking it together we landed on the name lone rider ranch um as like 
this this concept of like this idea for people to kind of call home like we wanted to make it a community where you know if you got a hat you'd feel like inclusive like oh i'm you know a member of the ranch like whatever you want to say about it and so that's kind of how it just started like the the brand and everything um and then it was a matter of like all right let's build a product let's build a design and then so we launched our first hat in august of 22 um we launched with just 80 hats at the time because we were like who knows what's going to happen? Like, is this, it may fizzle out, it may not do well or whatever. And we sold out within like 17 minutes and we were kind of like, this is crazy. And then from there, every dollar that like we have made has just gone right back in and investing, reinvesting in it. Um, you know, next product was like, okay, we sold at 80, like let's do a hundred. The next one was 120, you know, and like upping the volume and, and it's been incredible. And it's like taught me a lot about, you know, business myself too. Like it's such a growth, you know, opportunity where you're, you know, I'm sure you guys know, like figuring it all out as you go. And like, you know, you can, you can get all the tips and the words of wisdom, but like you guys are the ones in the trenches, like really building this and scaling it and it kind of like falls on you. Um, so it's been like an awesome creative like process, but it it's, it's, it's a beast sometimes that's for sure. <laughs> you kind of just like stole the words like out of our mouths because we were gonna ask you, uh, you know, why did you choose like a, like an yeah. like a well, starting a hat line? Everybody's kind of doing the Western thing now yep. like because of Siegelman. Yep. And then we were gonna ask you why you start like why you chose a diluted kind of you know path, and you had a pretty good answer for that. So yeah, I mean, I'll take that. Yeah, yeah. it was, it it was like interesting because I remember like when I had that conversation with Max, he was like everything that they do, they tie back to like the origin of the story. So the family, his family, you know, his dad, obviously very into like um, the equestrian therapy and everything like that. And so I remember him saying like, you know, whatever you end up doing, like make sure it ties back to like your story. And so that was something for me that like really stuck where I was like, I have a platform where I've openly talked about men's mental health, like how important it is to me. Like, let me try and build something from that and like really kind of like, come full circle um, because, you know, I think people are more willing to like purchase a product or associate with your brand when you know that there's like a philanthropic like give back or there's like a bigger mission behind like what you're doing. Um, so yeah, it was kind of just like that, but also like, like I said, like that duality of like this, this stereotypical image of like masculinity, you think of cowboys like so strong, rugged, tough, you know, Yellowstone and all this stuff, but like, at the same time, you know, I think when you like take that bigger step back, you're like, oh shit, like they're caring for their family. They're half the time like on the horse by themselves. Like there's such a loneliness, like solitude to them. And I think um, that wasn't like really played into like when we started it. And so I was like, that directly ties with men's mental health, this idea of like feeling alone sometimes. And, you know, the bigger picture of if Lone Rider Ranch is a place for you to call home, like you're never truly like alone. So yeah, kind of like all over the place and like um, just wanted to have it as like an opportunity for, you know, to allow myself to like obviously build something and like run with it. And also at the same time, like give back to something that like I'm super, you know, passionate about. How, how'd you come up with the name? Like how long did that take? Cause I feel like starting a brand, yeah. the name is any company. The name is yeah. like the hardest thing. And it's like the little, the smallest thing, but it's, it's, it's everything, right? Yeah. Especially with your identity yep. and like talking about the story now, how it fits. It's the loneliness and it's mm -hmm, the contrast mm -hmm. between the masculinity. It's like, yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. But did that come out, you know, come about easily? No, not at all. Like we were, we were kind of like thinking about like different ideas. We were, you know, we kind of, like I said, like wanted to like build this almost like um imaginary place right and so we were like okay if it's western like is it a ranch is it a farm is it stables like what's kind of like the tie obviously like we didn't want to touch stables because of like max and everything and so um it kind of like led to like okay is it a farm or a ranch and we landed on ranch at the time and then so we were like okay there's ranch now let's think about the other things and we were thinking about like i know one of the ideas was like rambling ranch but we were like oh that doesn't really sound good because like a rambler is like a traveler and all this stuff and so we were kind of like looking at different like western words or different like characteristics that like we would want like to express through the brand and like what exactly that looks and i i can't remember like how we landed on like loneliness there was like we i remember there was also like a broken heart ranch um, that we played into a little bit. We were like, uh, is that like too like sad, you know, e-boy? Like we were like, let's <laughs> not do that. 
Um, and then the more and more, like we kind of like talked about, like, I remember, I remember like writing out like a cowboy, like, or this, like, you know, this is character that we're building, like, what are the characteristics? Right. And so I remember like writing out all these different characteristics from what I would want this person or this character to like represent. And the one that stuck out was like this idea of like solitude and like loneliness. Um, and then we were like, is there something there? And then it was like, okay, well, you take a cowboy, it's only one person on a cowboy, a single rider, a lone rider. And so that's kind of like how we came up with that. Um, and so it, it definitely wasn't like an overnight, like it was, it was like a, we wanted to make it like a really like creative process. Cause we were like, if there's any longevity to this brand and like what we hope it would become, like we needed to kind of like take our time and like really like build out this brand story. When you got to this name, did it like click immediately? A hundred percent. We said it and we were like, that's <laughs> it. Like that, like it, and it just kind of like flowed and it just like stuck and like, you know, then you have like LRR and like that sounds like really good as like, you know, a shortened version and everything. So we were, we were pretty gassed up once we, uh, you know, finally landed on a name. So once you kind of landed on a name, you did a couple hat drops, mm -hmm. you've continued to grow it since then. For the first time now, you're doing apparel, you're yeah. dropping a t-shirt, mm -hmm. kind of talk about, you know, what the process was, you know, designing that tee, yeah. what goes into growing a business and kind of evolving a brand. Dude, it's, um, I, I, you guys probably know, but like a lot goes behind the scenes that not a lot of people see, right? And I think that's kind of like the joy and like building something is like, you know, you're, you're building something behind closed doors for months at a time and then you finally release something and then you know, it's all like, oh, this is great, but like it didn't happen overnight. And so, you know, the T is definitely something that like I've been wanting to do for a long time because I've been very much wanting to build a product that's like a lone rider t shirt or a lone rider hat. Like, you know, when you throw on the T, like you're going to know it's like a lone rider T. Um, and so that started with like me sampling different products, sampling different like fabrics. And I'm so particular about, you know, the quality and making sure that. It fits right. Is it a good weight? How does the texture of the shirt feel? How does it, how is it after a wash, right? Cause you know, some things shrink, some things don't, some things lose color. Um, and so the tees have been like, what it's June right now, we're getting to release on Friday. So that has been like a three month process. Like I, I, I found a manufacturer out in Los Angeles um, and they produce like incredible pieces. And so I sampled a shirt from them. I was like, the fit's great, the texture's great, everything that I would want for in a t-shirt, because that's the biggest thing. It's like, if I sell something, like I wanna make sure if I am a customer, would I buy it? Because that for me is like my gauge, right? And so putting that order with them, it goes through, you know, they, they cut and sew, they knit it all in Los Angeles. You know, that takes two, three weeks, depending on the quantity. And then, you know, it goes through a custom dyeing process where that's like another wash. And so, you know, that's like another week or so. Then it finally gets to, you know, the print house and they print it and everything. And so, you know, you're looking at like two months or so, four to six weeks, you know, could be even as long as like eight weeks for you from like when you put in an order to like the t-shirt. So it's definitely like a long process. And I think like it's, it's, you look at that process and you're like, okay, even though nothing forward facing is happening from a brand's front, that doesn't mean that the brand's not like growing and scaling. And so it was something that I wanted to be intentional about. I wanted to be like really meticulous about like all the detailing and everything. And so that's, you know, why it also like took so long because I don't want to just put out a low quality product just for the sake of like moving dollars and everything. Like that's not fulfilling to me. Um, so that's why we've taken our time with it, you know, and I think that like will speak more volume to, you know, what someone goes to buy. Like if they, if, if their per first purchase from Lone Rider is the t-shirt, like I want to make sure it's a good purchase, right? Because that's going to make them want to come back. That's going to be a t-shirt that they're going to wear for the next year, five years, whatever it may be. And they're going to be like excited about it. Um, so definitely have taken our time with that. And I think it just like goes back to the whole like bigger picture of like, scaling the business and growing it in a sense where like there is that commitment to quality um and it is okay to like take your time growing something because like in my mind like i've always said like you only get an opportunity to launch for the first time like once right because once you launch a product or you know a story or whatever it is like then people know about it they know what to expect and so for me like that's always been like a really important um priority as we kind of like 
navigate this whole business side of things and like try to scale the business. Where did you learn that? Cause like, that's such a good point. And I feel like, again, not brought up yeah. that much. And like the narrative out there with a lot of this, like social media stuff and new age, like e-commerce is like, just get something out there, yeah. get it out there, get yeah. it out there. But it's so true to be intentional and like really in, intentional is just the, the word you yeah. know. there. It's like, yeah, just be purposeful with, with how you come to market and come to present something to the world um did you learn that through experience or was it just an I, intuition like i think it was all just like through experience like i remember yeah. saying it like the first time that we launched the hats back in you know august of 22 like that was something where i was like okay like this is a cool product like i like it but like let's make sure everything that we're doing to launch is you know meticulous intentional it's detail oriented because like like i said like you know you launch your product and then all of a sudden people are going to have opinions about it like i don't want to put out a hat just to put out a hat and just say like hey i did this and check a box right um so you know i don't think there was like there was, i didn't have like a coach or a business professor that was like oh this you know this kind of like mantra or whatever um so I think that was just something that like was a priority. And I was like, okay, if, if we're going to do this, like I want to be able to do it right. Um, because like, you know, as like egotistical as it may sound, like if my name's associated with it, like I want it to be strong. I want it to be a strong product. Um, and so I didn't want to like put anything out there that I, that I wasn't like believing in or at the very least, like that I wasn't going to purchase. So it's kind of been like the MO, like from the beginning. And it's definitely, something that I try to like tell myself um, all the time is like, it's okay to like be slow about these things and like in, in to really be detail, detail oriented because I think it's so easy to like rush through and just to like sell product. Talk about the mental health aspect. Yeah. So you touch on that with coming up with the concept of the brand. Um, but in what ways have you been able to, you know, involve that and involve your, you know, passion to help that cause? Yeah um in in you know the past couple of years yeah it's it's really interesting because i feel i feel like i've always kind of been like emotional you know like um like in tune with my emotions like growing up like i feel like i've always kind of like you know listen to sad music when i'm sad you know like that type of situation and when i started getting a following and like a growing a presence on social I was really interested in kind of like the, is there something that I can do from like a charity standpoint, right? Because if I'm growing a platform, I want to at least be able to like do some good with it, right? Um, and so for me, men's mental health has always been like a priority. Like I started seeing a therapist uh, back in 2020. And I just, from my experiences, I'd always like realize that there's kind of like a stigma like around men's mental health where you know men aren't as encouraged to like speak out and to speak up about any issues that they're having and being an athlete growing up I was like you know we are so kind of like glorified for being in the gym for going to practice to going to you know lifts like all these different things to like improve our physical body but yet if I go to therapy once or twice a week like people think there's something wrong with me I'm like how can we glorify spending this much time on your physical body but yet when it comes to your mental like health like there was a disconnect for me and so um that kind of like led me to create you know a couple of videos like here and there about like men's mental health specifically talking about like that stigma that i feel like is out there and then i actually did a um a charity like spin class with rev the cycling studio here in boston um with the foundation movember which you know i'm sure you guys are familiar with it like the no shave november type situation um and that was something that like i picked that foundation because of like they were they're actually able to like give real practical kind of like tips and tricks they do a lot in the community for you know men not only for mental health but also like physical health and so um it just kind of seemed like a perfect like foundation to work with and so that event led to another charity event that i did with them and then you know obviously developing the brand i was like this is such a cool opportunity and so you know with lone rider like 10 percent of all of our proceeds like we donate to mental health foundations and so there's the face it foundation the jet foundation and then movember um that we you know donate our proceeds to uh, just kind of like a moment to like give back and you know again like to highlight like hey like men struggle too right and it's you know everyone's got their individual story that they're working through and so i think it's kind of like 
how can I use my brand or my platform to like bring awareness to that? Um, so it's, it's kind of been like a priority of mine for the past, you know, couple of years as I've like been experiencing therapy and going through that whole journey myself. How do you like, as a man, like, like, well, anyone really, but like, how do you like go out and like find a therapist? Like, I'm just curious, yeah. honestly. Yeah. I, I found my therapist through ZocDoc. Like I, this was kind of like my first like time getting into therapy. Like, you know, I playing baseball, like they're it's such a mental game. Right. And so, you know, I remember in college, like reading a mental book about like baseball and how to approach the game and everything. And, but I, there was no like sports psychology or anything, uh, no classes or anything like that. And so, uh, in 2020, when I started seeing my therapist, I was like, I have no idea like where to start, like, because there's so many different types of therapy. There's like cognitive behavioral, like all these different things. And I just went on ZocDoc. I was like, Hey, I've got this insurance. Like who in the Boston area, like is taking new patients. And so I went through, um, I think like, two people initially to find my current therapist and you know they say like therapy and finding your therapist is kind of like a job interview because like as much as you want a therapist like the therapist wants to make sure that like you are a good fit for them right and you want to you want to be able to have that relationship where you know you can speak freely about different things and like really like make sure it's productive um and so i was fortunate enough to find like mine kind of like early on through that process but yeah, it's, it's amazing, like, the resources, like, online, like, today that, like, you know, you can just zoc doc looking for a therapist or a therapist in Boston or wherever, and a lot of them are also virtual, too, so you don't even need to, like, go into the office and see them in person, so it's kind of, like, it was definitely, like, a new thing that I was, like, trying to figure out, um, but, you know, very happy to, like, have the resource and, you know, um, very happy just to, like, have that experience with her. It seems like that everything you're doing right now is, like, very intentional. Like, do you think that having, like, that clear mental state and, like, being, like, in tune with your emotions, like, allows you to work on projects that, you know, keep you fulfilled and keep you driven? I think finding what keeps me fulfilled and driven has been, like, the biggest part. How did you you find what kept you fulfilled and driven? Yeah, it's a a really good question. Like, early on, my therapist, um, she told me, you know, she was, like, because this was during the height of COVID, right, where everything was like closed down like i'm sure you know depression and everything was at an all-time high for a lot of different people and so um early on she told me find those things that like fill your glass right and so the kind of idea of like filling your glass is like when you've got a cup of water you know you can put as much water into the cup until it like overflows right but every single thing that you do throughout your day whether that's going for a run whether that's journaling whether it's meditation going to the gym whatever it may be like fills your glass a little bit and so she was really um helpful and like kind of like inspiring me to like find those things and so you know as something as simple as like getting outside for 10 minutes going in the sun getting a walk like that was something for me especially during covid where i was like this is super important because you know you're locked up all day and i'd be like going crazy about it right so um it was those things that like how did you feel during that? How did you feel afterwards? If you didn't do, you know, X, Y, and Z, like how did that make you feel? And so, you know, it is like trial and error because everyone has different things that kind of like fill, fulfill them and like motivate them and um, really like fill their glass. And so it's, it's a matter of like figuring out kind of like just that overall like feeling. And I remember like, I remember um, summer of 21, I was going out a lot, you know, bars had just like opened up again. This was kind of like when I was like really active on social and like, you know, I was really growing. And I remember going out a lot because I was like, this fulfills me, like the social interactions or whatnot. But I would get home and I would just like feel so shitty. I'd be like, my social anxiety is at an all time high. I'm drinking the most I've ever drank. And I was just like, this isn't what I want, you know? And so, but it takes that to like find what really like, you know, gets your gears going and what is like, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. And I think it's okay to like, ask yourself like those questions to really like nail down, like what is going to make me the happiest version or the best version of myself? Yeah. Yeah. Mic drop. (laughs) Mic drop right there. No, that's a, that's a great point. And like just experiencing things like living and just like having somewhat of just like a, analytical view of mm-hmm. your life mm-hmm. and taking in what works and what doesn't and just yeah. creating the best life and like whether that's internal you know talking to yourself or journaling or yeah. you know 
taking that next step and, and finding a therapist or someone to talk to, I feel like that's yeah will help anyone. A hundred percent. And but it you know it, it it takes like you said like it takes that to like okay what you know what fulfills me what makes me happy like you know for me it's like running it's you know something as simple as like going to grab coffee like it's simple things like that um, that are just like okay like if I do this today like. I'm going to feel good or I'm going to feel good about myself. Um, and so uh, again, like everyone has individual, you know, different things that like work for them. And, you know, a lot of it too is also, I think like recognizing like on the flip side, what doesn't make me happy. Right. And making sure that you stay away from those things. Who are some people, uh, creators or even just resources online uh, that you like follow and like have learned from like in this space mm -hmm. um, that, you know, you would recommend like checking out or just that you enjoy? Yeah, my my favorite podcast, like specifically for like men's mental health, there's a podcast called the Man Enough podcast. Incredible. Like it is they bring on guests and they really like break down like masculinity, like at its core. And and the people that they bring in, the things that I've been able to like learn from that have just like opened my eyes to you know, different types of resources or different ways I'm thinking about things. And I think like something like that is like super helpful. But I think nowadays, like there's such, you know, there's so many resources online, whether it's like articles, blogs, um, you know, even like dedicated like Instagram, you know, accounts and everything. Like you look at um, kind of like what Mad Happy has done. Like obviously they've, you know, there's, there's the merchandise for it, but like more so like creating that online community for mental well-being, I think is like super important and it's awesome. And, you know, I think more so than ever, like, mental health right now like there's such an acceptance of it and really trying to like shine a light on all of it and making sure people have those resources because that's like the toughest thing is like people don't feel like they have the resources or know where to look or where to ask or and i think that's like the best thing about social right now is like there's so much out there and whether that's a podcast form or blogs or um you know tiktoks like all the time about it so you know there's there's something out there for everybody what do you think that, like, guys need to do, like, as a whole? Like, guys, like, you know, as a population need to do? Because, you know, even though mental health awareness is on the forefront of everything mm -hmm. nowadays, there's a whole month dedicated to it. Yeah. You know, every, there's November, just, like, yeah. a million things. It's, like, it's, it's been kind of pushed down your throat, but at the same time, it still feels, like, a little bit cliche. I mean, like, yeah. no matter, like, what context you put it in, it just sounds so cliche because, you know, this masculinity, this idea of what a man should be, everybody's had this like built up for years. Like, what do you think that we need to do to kind of finally get over that hump? Like, yeah, you know what I mean, like, yeah, no, it's, it's a good question. And like, I'm certainly, you know, not the one that have like the answer and be like, oh, all of a sudden, it, you know, men's mental health is okay or destigmatize or whatever. But I think the biggest thing, and at least like from my experience is like when men talk about it, right? Because like you guys have individual things that you're working through, like personally, whether, you know, that's depression or, you know, for a lot of men, like that's suicide, that's anxiety, like whatever that work looks like, like everybody's dealing with their own story, right? And so, you know, I think the best thing that not only men, but also like women too, can really like just encourage men to like speak up and to speak out about it. And I think like there's such a stigma because I think from a men's perspective, man's perspective, like if you talk about your emotions or you talk about your struggles, like you're weak, right? Like you're, you're less of a man, which is kind of like insane. Right. And, but for me to like sit here and like open up to you guys about something, like you guys might have relatability in that you might find what I'm going through is similar to like what you guys are going through. And then I think the biggest thing is like realizing that it's okay. Right. It's okay to struggle. It's okay to, you know, sit with your emotions and feelings like whatever that looks like and so you know i think talking about it is the biggest thing and that's gonna like help destigmatize kind of like this whole notion of men are weak if they talk about their challenges and emotions um because like you know like i said like i think that's just ridiculous where we've come to a place where like i can't speak up because if i do you guys are going to perceive me as weak like that like that's kind of ridiculous in my mind and i you know, I, I remember um, years ago, I was talking with a good friend of mine and he was like using the example of um, when you wake up, right? And you're experiencing back pain or like your knees hurting, you go to the doctor, right? To go check it out. But if I wake up and I, you know, I don't feel like getting out of bed, like got a lot of anxiety because of work or because of a relationship, whatever it is, like, 
I should be able to go get the same like mental help that I would physically, right? And I think it's looked down upon if you like seek that help. And so for me, like it's always been one of those things where like if I can use a platform, if I can like speak up about my experience, that might help just one person, which is obviously very huge. And it's kind of a ripple effect. Like then that person can go tell his brother or his best friend about it. And I think like that's the most important thing is like having these conversations about it, talking, not being afraid to like talk about it. And like, you know, the more that you can kind of like, not in a, not in a performative way, obviously, but like in a way where it's very authentic and genuine to like who you are, what you're experiencing. I think like starting conversations around that is like the best way to help kind of like end the stigma around men's mental health. I think like in a perfect world and like the ideal state of masculinity would be to be a place where, where men can talk about yeah. things and be open and, and reflect on how they're feeling good or bad. Um, and I think it, there's there's definitely promising signs definitely like recently and there's a lot of people like we've touched on mm-hmm. like yourself included right um that are making strides in that direction and i think we can all just hope for for more of that and you know as what we're building like we're we love you know just like we're in support of that as yeah. well yeah and i think like uh you know the more people the better yeah i mean you even look at like you know what the nhl does like the bell let's talk like that's huge obviously like it's a canada you know initiative but still like from a league perspective if you've got a league that's like really like showcasing the athletes that are talking about and like hockey players out of all people like these like they're not getting their teeth knocked out like crazy like masculine dudes they've got a whole campaign and a whole like effort around speaking up about it and i think like that's so important because you know, I remember seeing like this Players Tribune article about um, I'm blanking on his name, but he was a he was a professional hockey player and eventually like retired because he was experiencing like so much like mental distress. And I think like highlighting those stories, it's like it's insane. Like Kevin Love, you know, for example, it's like a perfect example of someone where you look at him and you're like, this dude's an NBA All Star. He's an NBA champion. His wife is a supermodel. He now has a kid, and you know, like. This guy's got it figured out, but yet he started his whole own like mental health foundation and is so open about like his journey through depression and anxiety and everything. And it's like, you know, we're definitely getting there, which is awesome. Um, but I think it starts like with conversations like this. 100%. And I think that like just one more thing. It's almost like I don't want to like do him a disservice by getting his name wrong, but there was a professional golfer like a few weeks ago yeah. who he took his own life yeah. and he withdrew from the tournament, you know, early in the week. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, unfortunately he took his own life, you know, that, that weekend. And like, you know, on the surface, you know, he's got everything, you know, he's a pro golfer. He gets to be outside yeah. hitting balls for a living, you know, every single day. He had a family that loved him, you know, he was respected by his peers. And like, it just shows that even somebody who seemingly has everything together can be battling, you know, yeah. demons that you don't really know about. Yeah. So I think that, you know, if, if there was less of a stigma around, you know, like mental health and talking about it, you know, he could have talked to, to his, anybody in his, in his camp, any, like mm-hmm. anybody, any professional golfers that were going through the same stuff he was. And then, you know, he, he may still, may still have been with us. Yeah. So, um, I forget his name. But, yeah, uh, I know exactly who you're talking about. It, it can happen to anybody, and you see, yeah. And that's the thing, too, because, you know, it's like, had he felt like there was a place for him to, like, speak up about it? Like, who knows? Like, you really, you really will never know, but I think it's more so, like, how, like, how can we create an environment where men feel, like, safe to, like, bring that up? Because, like, that's the big thing, too. It's like, oh, I don't want to burden you with what I'm feeling or I don't want to feel judged with how I bring up, you know, X, Y, and Z. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to bring it up to you guys, right? Because then it's like, okay, then it's just going to suppress even more. And then like, there's going to be a breaking point or like whatever it is. And so it's like, how can we really create that like space in that environment for like, you know, people like you and me who are just, you know, average people are going, getting through life right now. It's like, how can we, you know, do our part to like make sure men feel comfortable to like talk through things? Yeah, especially when you see, when you you know we bring up all these athletes or celebrities or yeah. stuff like that that's such a small sample size of the population obviously their lives are somewhat different like i like to always like say you know being around athletes or celebrities or whatever they're just normal people at the end of the day mm-hmm. but they do have elements of their life that totally. are different and invoke a ton of stress yeah. but when you see it happens to them like it's hard to even like 
think about how many more people that are just regular people yeah. that are dealing with the same shit, if not worse. Yeah. Um, and so just being able to almost be like a spokesperson or be relatable and be like, look, like I'm just a regular person and like I'm dealing with the same stuff. And yeah. I think that's really, really powerful. Yeah. And that was something that like when I, when I was making like those videos, like, you know, obviously like speaking from the heart about that in my experience of it, but like some of the feedback and like the people commenting, like where, you know, people are saying like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm sending this to my boyfriend or to my brother or to like my dad, like, and stuff like that. You see that and you're like, wow, like, what I have to talk about through my experience, like resonates with someone so much that they're willing to share it with like the men in their life. And I think, you know, to your point, like you never really know like what people are going through on the surface and everything. And it's like, if I'm experiencing something like this, like there's so many people out there that are going through the same thing. Yeah. For sure. Thank you, Connor. Yeah, Dude, appreciate Connor. you guys. That was yeah. awesome. That was one of the yeah. deeper episodes. I know. Yeah, that was like great. <laughs> Super deep there for a second. Great chat. No, we, I yeah. think I feel like we touched like all the bases right there, right? Yeah. Unless there's anything else you, you have to add. No, I mean like, you know, I appreciate you guys having me on. Like I know it didn't work out like the other week or whatever when we were trying to get together, but you know, from meeting you guys and like knowing what you guys are building and everything, I definitely like appreciate and respect like what you guys are trying to do because, you know, like I said, like you're in the trenches, you're trying to build something as you go. And so it's really awesome to like see you guys like dive in head first and like really own it. So definitely thank you guys for having me on. Like awesome to sit here. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Connor. Thank you.